It's week six. It's the end of phase one. It's time for a very special episode of Countdown to Infinity War. Countdown to Infinity Wars. Countdown to Infinity Wars. Yeah. Hello and welcome to Countdown to Infinity War, the show where I watch all 17 Marvel Cinematic Universe movies in the run-up to the release of Avengers Infinity War coming out in UK cinemas at the end of April. Last week we watched Captain America, the first Avenger, and this week it's the end of Phase 1, the culmination of the last five movies we've watched. It is Avengers Assemble. Now if you've been watching these videos you'll know what we've been trying to do here is piece together the timeline of the Marvel Cinematic Universe and trying to work out if it actually really does make sense. Uh, so what I wanted to do with this one, with it being the end of phase one, I wanted to do it is actually look at the whole lot, the last six movies that we've watched and see how it's all tying together as we go into phase two. So uh, with that in mind, let's head off to the Marvel Cinematic Universe timeline. Okay, so this is where we stand at the moment with the Marvel Cinematic Universe timeline. So let's head on in and we'll start at the very beginning of confirmed things that have happened uh, in this. So we start with back in July 4th, 1918, Steve Rogers is born. All right. And then we find out that in March 1942, Hydra finds the Tesseract. Then uh, Steve Rogers joins the army in the 14th of June, 1943. And then about eight days later, he is turned into Captain America on the 22nd of June, 1943. Uh, he spends a bit of time doing the roadshow kind of thing, uh, getting war bonds, and, uh, but then finds his true destiny by uh, sighting the rescue in Italy in November, 1943. Uh, roughly, we think um, it's maybe around about 1945. He's frozen in ice. Um, that's a guess, though, but it must be sometime between 1943 and 1945, because uh, following after his uh, he's frozen in ice, uh, VED day happens. So obviously, um, uh, then you know must be before then. Um, I don't know how long Howard Stark is looking for um, uh, Steve Rogers uh, before he actually finds the Tesseract. Um, I said sometime around about the late forties. I mean, give him five years to have a look around. It must have been sometime after 1945, sometime in the late 40s. Which to me begs the question, why didn't Howard Stark do any experiments on the Tesseract? He found it back when he was looking for Captain America back in the 40s or the 50s or whatever. Are you telling me that he never did anything with the Tesseract, the thing that is clearly a source of unlimited power? He's all about unlimited power that's his thing he loves it so he just ends up just forgetting about it i mean i guess an explanation might be that that shield found out he had it took it off him stuck it in a a, a box because they didn't realize what it was and then suddenly discovered it around about the time when they started needing to make nu nuclear weapons uh, after thor turns up i guess that's an excuse and then, like, I suppose Howard Stark then goes on and builds the arc reactor in the 70s out of a, or the 60s uh, out of a, a sort of a, a, a need to frustration that he can't get his hand on the Tesseract. So he builds his own one. Uh, don't know. But, yeah. Okay, so moving on, um, 1963 to 1967, it's confirmed that Anton Vanko uh, worked on the arc project. Uh, with Howard Stark and then in September 1973 Howard Stark filmed a City of the Future video for the Stark Expo in for 1974. Um, and around about this time the Arc Reactor is created possibly around about 1970s, well the late 70s anyway. Um, a very important date here uh, is the December 16th 1991, might come up later, who knows. Uh, is the death of Howard and Maria Stark. And sometimes before uh, that, uh, Tony graduates MIT age 17, and sometime after that, Tony takes over the Stark Industries age 21. Um, 
We think roughly around about March 2002 is when the creation of the Hulk happened. Um, he then went missing uh, for a good long time, with the last sighting um, by General Ross being October 21st, 2006. Uh, he ends up in Brazil in March 2007, uh, and ends up in uh, Virginia April 2007, and has a big old Barney with Abomination in New York in May 2007, roughly, ending um, the movie The Incredible Hulk in uh, British Columbia around about June 2007. None of that really too much confirmed, uh, but that's give or take a few few months, I would say. Then on to February, around about February 2008, Tony Stark is captured by terrorists and returns home two to three months later in May 2008. And uh, it's approximately a month after that that he creates the Mark II Iron Man suit, the nice red and gold one. Uh, he has a big old Barney with Iron Man and Iron Mo uh, Iron Man and Iron Monger. Have a big old Barney on June twenty fourth, two thousand and eight. Uh, this is confirmed by the fact that that's the date that Agent Coulson uh, sets to meet um, Tony Stark. And uh, we think sometime after that, July two thousand eight, Stark meets Nick Fury, and sometime after that, Stark meets General Ross uh, at the end of Incredible Hulk to talk about the Hulk and the Avengers Initiative. Uh, then a wee bit later, Anton Vanko's son uh, creates the Whiplash suit using ARC technology. Um, mid to May, uh, mid May two thousand and nine is the start of uh, the Star Expo, and um, then on the twenty fourth of May they go to Monaco where they meet Whiplash, and the whole kind of thing ends uh, with Iron Man, War Machine, and Whiplash having a big old showroom showdown. Twenty two days after the start of the Star Expo on in around about June two thousand and nine. Uh, and it's also around about this time that there's a discovery of Mjolnir uh, as Agent Coulson is called away from Iron Man 2 to Thor. Um, and uh, and then th the whole of Thor kind of takes place over four or five days, so somewhere around, around June 2009. Um, which brings us to Avengers Assemble. So there wasn't really much, in fact there was no dates that I could find in this movie to tie it down, but there was one comment that was made by Nick Fury, who said, uh, and addressing Thor, that last year um, Thor turned up and changed everything. It was in the sort of the bit where all the Avengers are meeting together and having a big argument um, uh, in that sort of science room, and uh, he says he says last year. So if Thor takes place in June two thousand and nine then this means that the attack on New York, because uh, the whole of Avengers Assemble takes place over the course of four days, um, uh, then the uh, it must take place around about summer 2010. Um, so that's gonna, what I'm going to stick with, and until um, there's other dates that confirm or deny that, that's what I'm going to stick with, summer 2010. So with that, we didn't really have a date that tied down when Stephen Rogers actually wakes up. So because the... Uh, attack on New York happens in summer 2010 and it doesn't seem like he's been awake that long when uh, he heads off there I'm going to say sort of springtime uh, Steve Rogers wakes up so yeah that's everything so far um, with, uh, with wow with the timeline I almost fell over there but that's all right suffering from my heart uh, yeah phase one done well, that's everything for this week. Thanks very much for watching. Next week, we're going to be looking at Iron Man 3 and seeing if that uh, really messes everything up for us. Thanks very much now. Bye.